Welcome back to the Hydrogen Studies Podcast. In today's episode, we're diving into an emerging science, hydrogen water, and its potential relationship with cardiovascular health. If you're like most people, you probably know that heart disease is still the leading cause of death worldwide. But what's less well known is how deeply oxidative stress and vascular inflammation contribute to this problem. Scientists have been searching for ways to target these root causes more effectively. And today, we'll explore one of the more intriguing candidates being studied, molecular hydrogen. It's simple, natural, and surprisingly powerful. We're going to walk through what the research actually says, the good, the promising, and the parts that still need more exploration. Now, to be clear, we're not here to claim miracles or hype. We're here to look at real data, share real studies, and consider what this could mean for the future of heart health. Let's jump in. This is the Hydrogen Studies Podcast, sponsored by Echo Water. Heart disease is still the leading cause of death globally, responsible for about one in every three deaths, according to worldwide statistics. Despite significant advances in medical treatments and public health efforts, the numbers remain stubbornly high. Why? because cardiovascular disease is often rooted in two powerful and interconnected forces, oxidative stress and vascular inflammation. A detailed review published in Oxidative Medicine and Cellular Longevity by Stephen and colleagues, 2019, helps us understand why. Reactive oxygen species, or ROS, are unstable molecules that easily react with other molecules in the body. When produced in excess, ROS don't just cause random wear and tear. They actively trigger inflammation in blood vessels, damaging the delicate inner lining known as the endothelium. Over time, this damage leads to the buildup of fatty plaques inside arteries, a process called atherosclerosis. As plaques grow, they narrow the arteries, restricting blood flow to the heart, brain, and other critical organs. This is the biological domino effect that can ultimately result in heart attacks, strokes, and peripheral artery disease. Importantly, Stevens' review emphasizes that oxidative stress doesn't act alone. It works hand-in-hand -hand with chronic, low-grade inflammation. Once ROS set the stage, the body's immune system responds by flooding the damaged area with inflammatory cells. While initially meant to heal, this response can spiral out of control, further destabilizing blood vessels and fueling disease progression. The traditional tools we've used to fight oxidative stress, like general antioxidant supplements, think vitamin C, vitamin E, they often fall short. Many large clinical trials have shown disappointing results. Why? Because these supplements aren't selective. They may neutralize both harmful and beneficial oxidants indiscriminately, disrupting important cellular processes. This gap between what we know and what we can effectively treat has left researchers asking an urgent question. Is there a better way to address oxidative stress and vascular inflammation at their root without unwanted side effects? Let's take a moment to hear from our sponsor. Your body is a system, and when it's running right, you feel focused, energized, in flow. But sometimes we struggle to find that flow state. Why? Because there's too much static in our system. Brain fog, fatigue, and inflammation. The Echo Flask clears the static by infusing your water with molecular hydrogen, a natural, science-backed gas that helps your body think sharper, recover faster, and run smoother. This is more than hydration. It's better focus, more energy, faster recovery, less internal stress, and long-term benefits that keep you sharp. When your water works harder, your whole system does too. Find your flow state with the Echo Flask hydrogen water bottle and get an unlimited supply of hydrogen water at home and on the go. Visit echowater.com and use code H2Studies to get 10% off of your first order with Echo Hydrogen Water products. Enter molecular hydrogen, a molecule made up of just two hydrogen atoms. On paper, it seems almost too simple. But under the microscope of modern research, hydrogen has revealed a highly selective antioxidant capability that is reshaping how we think about oxidative stress intervention. Unlike conventional antioxidants, molecular hydrogen specifically targets the most dangerous free radicals, hydroxyl radicals and peroxynitrite, without disturbing other important reactive species necessary for healthy cellular signaling. This highly selective action was confirmed in a groundbreaking 2020 PLOS-1 study by Kioi and colleagues. In their experiments, animals exposed to daily low-level hydrogen gas inhalation showed remarkable protection against vascular remodeling. 
Vascular remodeling refers to structural changes in the blood vessels that occur in response to chronic high blood pressure or other cardiovascular stresses. Over time, these changes can lead to stiffening of the vessels, reducing their ability to contract and relax appropriately, which increases the risk of serious cardiovascular events. Hydrogen gas didn't just slow this remodeling. It actively prevented it. The researchers found sig significantly less thickening of blood vessel walls and better maintenance of vascular flexibility in the hydrogen-treated groups compared to controls. What makes this even more compelling is the underlying mechanism. Kiyoi's team found that hydrogen inhalation led to a significant reduction in oxidative stress markers within the blood vessel tissues themselves. This suggests that hydrogen is not merely masking symptoms, but may be altering the disease process at a foundational level by preserving the health of vascular structures. Moreover, because hydrogen is such a small molecule, it easily diffuses across cell membranes, including into mitochondria, the primary sites of oxidative metabolism and oxidative stress generation. This rapid diffusion allows hydrogen to act at the very sites where oxidative damage originates, offering a level of precision and efficiency that most other antioxidants cannot achieve. This unique combination of selectivity, penetration, and biological impact has led some researchers to propose that hydrogen therapy, whether through inhalation, hydrogen-rich water, or other delivery methods, could represent a major advance in cardiovascular disease prevention. Up to this point, most of the research on molecular hydrogen has been in animals or cell models. That's valuable. It gives us insights to how it works at a biological level. But the real question is, does any of this translate to humans? A 2018 pilot study helps us start to answer that. Researchers led by Dr. Karovlajiv focused on adults over 65, a group at higher risk for cardiovascular disease and metabolic issues. These participants weren't given medications or asked to change their lifestyle. Instead, they inhaled 4% molecular hydrogen gas for 20 minutes a day, every day for four weeks. The results were encouraging. By the end of the study, participants showed a, a statistically significant drop in their cardiovascular risk scores, as calculated by the American Heart Association algorithm. This score is used in clinical practice to estimate someone's risk of a future heart event, so even small shifts here are meaningful. They also saw improvements in cardiorespiratory fitness by over 22% and a modest but notable increase in grip strength. Both are solid markers of overall physical function and aging. Grip strength, in particular, is a reliable predictor of mortality and general health in older populations. There were also trends toward lower cholesterol levels and, and faster glucose, though these need to be confirmed in larger studies. It's important to keep this in context. This was a small, open-label study with no placebo group, and four weeks in a, is a short window. We still don't know the optimal dose, the ideal duration, or how hydrogen therapy might interact with other treatments. But as a first step in humans, this matters. It's one of the first signals that hydrogen could play a role in modifying real-world health markers, not just in theory, but in practice. And it raises good questions for future research. Could hydrogen be useful as a low-risk, adjunctive tool for managing cardiovascular risk? Could it help support healthy aging, especially in populations that are already vulnerable? But not everyone is keen on hydrogen gas inhalation. So what about simply drinking hydrogen-infused water? A 2020 randomized controlled trial by Ishibashi and team tackled this question. Participants in their study drank water containing over 7 parts per million of hydrogen, a relatively high concentration. The result? Significant improvements in peripheral endothelial function, which is a fancy way of saying that the inner lining of their blood vessels worked better. This is important because healthy endothelial function is critical for maintaining flexible arteries, proper blood flow, and overall cardiovascular health. Endothelial dysfunction is not a minor issue. It's one of the earliest warning signs of developing heart disease. It sets the stage for hypertension, plaque buildup, and even stroke. So when researchers observed measurable improvements in endothelial performance from simply drinking hydrogen-rich water, it turned heads. Moreover, the trial was conducted under randomized controlled conditions, the gold standard in clinical research, which strengthens the credibility of these findings. Participants who drank hydrogen water showed better reactive hyperemia indices, a clinical measure of blood vessel flexibility and function, compared to those who drank regular water. 
Even more fascinating, these improvements were achieved without introducing pharmaceuticals or major dietary changes, just through the simple act of drinking water enriched with dissolved hydrogen gas. It's a reminder that sometimes the most elegant solutions are the simplest. Still, as with all emerging science, we must, we must approach these findings with balanced curiosity. The study was relatively short in duration, and larger long-term studies will be necessary to confirm how sustained the benefits of hydrogen water are over months and years. However, given the safety profile and ease of use, hydrogen water holds real promise as a potential adjunct strategy for supporting vascular health. And now, let's expand the conversation to another clinical piece of heart health cholesterol. Could hydrogen have a role to play there too? Let's find out. Emerging evidence suggests that hydrogen might also support better cholesterol health, another essential pillar of cardiovascular well-being. In a fascinating clinical trial published in the Journal of Cl Clinical Endocrinology and Metabolism, Song and colleagues explored how hydrogen impacts high-density lipoprotein, HDL, commonly known as good cholesterol. Most people focus on simply raising HDL numbers, but it's not just the quantity of HDL that matters, it's the quality. Healthy HDL particles help remove excess cholesterol from artery walls and transport it back to the liver for disposal, a process known as reverse cholesterol transport. Dysfunctional HDL, on the other hand, loses this protective ability. In this study, Patients with hypercholesterolemia, abnormally high levels of cholesterol in the blood, were given hydrogen therapy. Researchers found that hydrogen activated a protein called ATP binding cassette transporter A1, ABCA1. This, is tra this transporter is critical for loading cholesterol into HDL particles, enhancing their ability to clean up cholesterol from the arterial walls. The implications are significant. Hydrogen didn't just increase the amount of HDL, it improved its function. Participants showed more efficient cholesterol efflux, meaning HDL was more capable of removing dangerous cholesterol buildup from their arteries. This shift in HDL function could have profound long-term implications for atherosclerosis prevention and heart disease management. While these are still early findings, they open exciting doors for future research into non-drug strategies for optimizing lipid health naturally. Taken together, the vascular and lipid findings suggest that hydrogen may be acting across multiple fronts to support cardiovascular health, from reducing oxidative stress to improving cholesterol dynamics. So where does that leave us? The early science tells a story of potential. Hydrogen appears to reduce oxidative stress and inflammation, two of the fundamental drivers of cardiovascular disease. It supports vascular health by preserving the delicate function of endothelial cells. It may improve lipid profiles, not by simply raising HDL cholesterol levels, but by making HDL particles more effective at their job, clearing cholesterol from artery walls. Yet despite all of this exciting potential, the story of hydrogen therapy is still in its early chapters. Most of the human studies so far have been small pilot trials with limited sample sizes and short durations. Different studies use different hydrogen doses, delivery methods, and concentrations, making direct comparisons tricky. We still need larger, longer, and more rigorous controlled clinical trials to answer some key questions. How much hydrogen is enough to achieve therapeutic effects? How should it best be delivered? Water, gas, or some other method? Are there certain groups who benefit more than others? Additionally, while hydrogen appears to be extremely safe based on current data, long-term safety studies are important if it's going to be, become a mainstream adjunct therapy. In short, the future looks bright for molecular hydrogen, but we're not ready to hand out universal prescriptions just yet. What we can say is that hydrogen therapy is one of the most promising and fascinating emerging tools in the ongoing fight against cardiovascular disease. Here's why we're excited about hydrogen water and cardiovascular health. Unlike traditional pharmaceutical approaches, hydrogen doesn't work by blocking a single receptor or enzyme. It doesn't forcefully intervene a complex biological system. Instead, it supports the body's own natural processes, defending against oxidative damage, reducing inappropriate inflammation, and maintaining the flexible, resilient function of our blood vessels and cholesterol transport systems. That's a fundamentally different philosophy of healthcare. Instead of suppression, we're talking about support. We'll be watching the research closely as it evolves. For now, hydrogen therapy remains a field filled with excitement, curiosity, and cautious optimism.
Thanks for tuning in. Stay healthy, stay curious, and we'll see you next time.